Kaora, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good to be here. Entrepreneurship changed my life. It's been my calling for the last 20 years. It's what I've done. I believe it's powerful. I think it unleashes the impact of some of our most talented and dynamic citizens to make a change in the world. This man, uh, Irv Grosbeck, changed my life. He's the one who told me I should be an entrepreneur and I could do it and I should do it right now and not waste any time. And that was a really pivotal time for me. That was a pivotal moment of my life. And I'm trying to uh, live up to that and do as Irv did and as much as I can offer that inspiration to other people. That's what I've been doing for the last 10 years. I've lived this calling out as an entrepreneur, a founder, an investor, venture capitalist. Uh, generally, my focus has been in investing and building software. Uh, this is more uh, an accident of history. I was born into the time and place where this revolution was taking place and I could have this impact. My dad uh, bought an Apple II Plus, this Apple II Plus, when I was nine years old. and. I got into computers. I was born in California in the middle of this revolution, uh, and it created the tailwind and the opportunity for me to have an impact on the world. I've focused my efforts in a couple of areas. Two, two of those areas are information, the unleashing of information, and markets and their ability to have an impact. Um, information is trapped, has been historically trapped. It's trapped in these books. Uh, they're not searchable, they could be expensive, they could be hard to locate, they could be cumbersome to find, and it's trapped in people's heads. There are experts who have deep experience and knowledge but don't either have the desire, or the time, or the ability to write that down in a way you can find it. And the internet revolution has freed up a ton of this for access to all of you. Every, you know, Matthew says everything he built was he learned on YouTube on the farm. And, and that information, the ability to do that 20 years ago would have been quite difficult. This has been a, a massive gift to society. And um, one way in which I lived that out, you saw my uh, old co-founder, fellow Jack Herrick, talk about WikiHow yesterday. This is a practical tool that's educated hundreds of millions of people. And he and I founded that, mostly him, a little bit me, uh, you know, over 10 years ago. And it's had a huge impact. Uh, other ways in which I freed up information, one is uh, I invested in a site called Quora, a big question and answer site. Another information resource I invested in were these plucky little founders in their mid-20s come out from the Midwest to Silicon Valley and uh, gave them some money and they uh, built quite a powerful business and on the back of that everything you see here. So big hand for Matthew and Brian. That's. That's Brian, the lower one's Brian. He's not very recognizable relative to the current look. Um, and uh, markets are another area. At best, I, at their best, and they aren't always at their best, I think markets provide a powerful and efficient allocation of resources to attack some of the biggest problems and to make the most change. I believe in markets used correctly, and this is where I started my career. I founded this company here, you see, making markets here. But I've done a lot of other things. This is a giant decentralized prediction market. There's another EHF fellow, Joey, who you'll hear from, who is building Augur, uh, which might supplant my old business, but do it on the blockchain, which would be wonderful. And then I've invested in a, a ton of markets, things from corporate receivables to making LTL trucking more efficient to collectible sneakers to graphic design, all kinds of markets have been a big theme throughout my investing career. So what do I think now? Now I think we're in a problem of walled gardens. Companies, corporations have walled in our information and the, the original internet revolution decentralized, broke that down and shared it back, but corporations are resilient in protecting their profits and those walls have been rebuilt by the Googles and the Apples and the Facebooks of the world and those companies have done a number of good things, but now we're at a state where that open protocol of the internet, which allowed anyone to publish and anyone to share, Ha, is being restricted, and that's restricting innovation. That power that was granted to individuals is being blocked off again, 
And this pendulum is just swinging back. This pendulum goes between centralization and decentralization. And within the internet and technology side, we've rolled back towards centralization. And you got to go through the Facebook apps, the Facebook or the App Store or Play Store uh, to access users. And I think that's bad. So I'm spending time now. Well, this is another example of that. You look, the mobile revolution might have interrupted that, but instead is co-opted by all the big companies own all of them. I'm spending my time in the blockchain. I think it offers the decentralization opportunity that could break those walls open again. And all the big powerful people are nowhere, unlike the last slide on this. Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google are nowhere. So what Matthew, Yosef, and the HF team have done in their part in the beautiful Aroha Valley where we've spent this week, they're bringing the best of technology to make the future a better place. I'm proud to be part of that journey and part of the HF fellows and team trying to make that happen. Thank you.